Hello everyone, good to see such a good crowd. Uh, hope you enjoy your session. As Chad said, the idea is to get a small business perspective of how things are going on in this area, particularly with respect to the Hebron project. We have three small business leaders and here to give some short presentations. I'm not going to be introducing them, they're going to introduce themselves and then be a bit of a panel discussion. So Keith Rodway from Rodway's Printing and Office Supplies. I find out Keith. Wade Mills from Wade Creations. And Andrea Sharp from Kurlandy Designs. You guys can welcome up. No pressure, right? No pressure. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Andrea Sharp. I am the owner of Kurlandy Designs. Um, Kurlandy Designs was a is a jewelry design business that I started actually while I was still teaching in high school. Uh, the name comes from Carly, my daughter, Andrew, my son, and Andy Hunt, my, uh, my father, who's now looking down at me. Um, we are a small business. We are growing. We were the developers of the Sparkles of Hope bracelets, and we are now the developers and creators and uh, promoters of the Children's Wish bracelets, which were launched this past weekend at the uh, fair. So I'm probably the newcomer on the scene, smallest in terms of the businesses and also the newest in terms of starting the operation. Um, in terms of what's going on, I think one of our biggest things that we have going for our business, I've got a wonderful group of people to work with and um, tremendous community support both in, both in terms of volunteers who have helped out get the business on its feet and also in terms of uh, people who are, are uh, the moral support behind the business as well. So I'm the newcomer, I'm the newbie, I'm just learning the business part of this. I've come from an education background, having retired from teaching. So business is the, the, my, um, not my forte. So I'm learning through the uh, help of tremendous support from people like Betsy Saunders back there who wrote me into this. Again. <laughs> I didn't realize that I had to come up and speak in front of people, but Betsy's been a tremendous support uh, in terms of uh, growing my business, and that's, that's where I am right now at this stage. So in terms of Hebron and the bigger picture, I'm just a little mouse getting my way through the door here, trying to figure out exactly how to fit into all this. And I think one of the strongest things we have going for our business is that we can produce and manufacture, in fact, in the back of my car, if anyone goes out afterwards, and I just got a new sign put on my car, and, and one of our slogans is, you dream it, we'll design it. So that's our promotion, that's our business. So in terms of working with the big guns and on all this, in terms of where would we fit in, uh, it's we're you know I'm a, I'm a woman owned business I'm a small business I'm just getting started with all this I'm learning as I'm going but in terms of that that's where I guess my business would be so I could go to a company and say hey, listen do you need something designed do you need something in terms of corporate um, you know corporate gifts or something to do with your company we're right there ready to go <coughs> we've got the enthusiasm we got the experience. Uh, you know, we've started developing in terms of fundraising. Sparkles of Hope was an incredible success. We're hoping now that the Wish Bracelets will also be able to raise money for the Children's Wish Foundation, which is a tremendous, tremendous organization. So I guess from that, our fundraising potential that we have, we've been there, we've done that, we're now learning as we're going along to make our business success and be able to promote, and, and even for the big companies to be able to say, here's an individualized program, uh, it gives promotion that we can use in helping you with your corporate uh, identity. Okay. Uh, I represent Wave Creations and we're a home-based uh, embroidery and um, quilt store, a fabric store if you want. Uh, we supply the local market with uh, decorative clothing like your club jackets and and uh, things for the swim team and so on and so forth and the, and the general public has really supported us in this particular area so uh, again uh, I'm going to be looking at notes uh, we have our stores home base. We work out of our uh, of our basement, actually, in Harcourt, which is about 20 kilometers from here. Uh, it started by my wife, uh, seriously, in 2008 as a hobby, and has grown into what it is today um, by a lot of optimism and a lot of hard work. Uh, today, uh, Vera and myself, along with a full-time and a part-time employee, provide the local market, again, with crafts and clothing and pretty much anything that you want. Something similar to Andrea. If you can think about it, we can design it. So uh, you know, we're, we're looking to that as, a, as our niche. Uh, 
again, it wasn't very easy, but it has been very interesting. Um, we set it to develop a market that we could compete in the local area, and the locals have really supported us. And then, of course, along came Hebron, and it, it takes something to it takes something out of a small business, especially like ours, to like what do you do and what does this project mean and how do you tap into it? And what we found was we had to get educated and we had to find where our place was. And so I attended some meetings. Um, I registered with ESDA and Bob's here and he's been a tremendous help to me. And I also talked to people from CBDC and INTRD, HRLE, ACOA, and actually ENLO has been, uh, we've been nominated this year. Um, my wife was nominated as interpreter of, in, I can't even say the word, of the year. And uh, she declined at this time based on the fact that she didn't think that she was ready. So I kind of think that we're going to be seeing something from her next year. So that's her part of, of this business. And again, the people from the, from the organizations that I just touched on, they know who they are. Um, you know, uh, Adrian and, and Alicia first, and, and of course uh, Gayla and, and, and Betsy and so on. So everybody's had an input as to what we do. And today, uh, to date, we've, uh, we've already bidded on one contract with, uh, with uh, Hebron. And even though we weren't successful, it's, it's, uh, we're thrilled to be recognized as a player. So it doesn't matter how small you are or how big you are. It's, it just seems like you've got to just stay focused and, and know what your place is and, and, and get there. So we've offered up our services to other local suppliers as well, and we've found a niche. So we have uh, another major player here, um, and I'll mention the Mercer's Marine. Um, that are going to be going after a lot of the things that work with Iran, and we found that we can dec we are decorating clothing for for Mercers right now, and we're actually listed in their catalog as uh, as someone that can help them uh, go through that process. So, uh, you know, we're helping them secure bids. They can't work without us. We can't work without them. But this is where we fit, and uh, we're very pleased to be a part of that. Um, we're really excited about the upcoming project. It seems like. You need to stand back from time to time and find out um, what expectations are of the industry itself and, 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 and kind of just plug into where it fits. And that's what, that, that's what been our niche. And, and again, with uh, people like uh, CBDC and, and HRLE allowed me to finish up my career, which was in the automotive industry, uh, joining with my wife and then stand back and take a look at what, what we need to do and, and service this particular area. Uh, Never forget about the little guy. The little guy is where, where this all started. You know, no one started at the top. And uh, you know, someone has to supply and support every aspect of this project, directly or indirectly. And, and looking around this room, who better than us? Uh, think outside the box is my message to the people that are in this room right now. There's more to it than just you know, the one thing. If you think outside the box, you're, you'll find an opportunity, or I believe, and, and we're seeing it every day. We're growing every day. Uh, with just three years in the business, um, you know, we see that we, we've made we've made a, a mark. Uh, people respect uh, the product that we're turning out, and um, and it shows when we get the repeat orders. Uh, and, and we also want to encourage people to stand up and, and feel good about what's happening here because, you know, uh, no matter how insignificant you feel, you're still a part of this. You're here. You know, you're on the ground, and no matter what you do, you're, you're supporting this whole thing. And they can't do it without us. And, and that, that's, what, that's the message that, that I took from the last meeting, which was only 20 or so people last year. Um, I'm like, totally surprised that, uh, that, again, it shows in this room that, the, that we're being encouraged, we're, being, you know, we're, we're optimistic, we're all optimistic, or we wouldn't be here. So again, I'm a very small player, very similar to Angela. We, uh, we, um, we're here to do our thing, um, and one other thing that I will mention, and, and no doubt the, the larger players will notice it too, is the enthusiasm that's in this community right now. Like, we, we never, I've never seen such hype before. You can't go to a store uh, without seeing a help wanted sign. You can't go to a restaurant without seeing a help wanted sign. You can't go to, you can't go to a store and get help. In some cases, <laughs> because people are moving around and, and fulfilling dreams and doing things that they aspire to do that they were afraid to do before. And I think that this is going to be a, a really, really good opportunity for not only people in this room, but the entire area to, to, to work on. And again, uh, never think that you're insignificant. Uh, for me, it was, 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to run with the big players. I don't think that we have the, the resources to do that. But what I do know is that there are so many other places and things that we can do. We just need to be focused on. Like the other two here, I see a lot of new faces in this room. And I think that's, first of all, fantastic to, to see the young people coming up. That means you have an interest in what's going on in this community. And for that, I commend you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Keith Rodway. Uh, myself and my wife, who's the real boss of the operation, own a, a couple of small businesses in this town. Uh, the one you guys have probably really heard about is Rodway's Printing and Office Supplies. And that's the one uh, that we've really spent a lot of time with in regards to oil and gas, which is kind of the topic today of working on. Uh, probably as far back as two and a half, three years ago, we realized that this project was going to happen. And we started doing work back then in preparation for this project. Uh, we've been through the mega projects all the way back through Hibernia uh, in the past 20 years. So we kind of have a bit of a, a sense of what's going to come up. And we, so we had a sense saying, how do we get more of it? How do we learn from what we've done in the past? And what we did is start getting involved back then, start networking, start finding out who's who in the zoo, who's going to be the players, and start getting to know them, and more importantly, getting them to know us. So from that point of view, we've seen some s small success already and some minor contracts in that from the, the site as well as St. John's. And of course, we're fortunate enough to have Exxon uh, working out of Clarenville right now, which is great through Kiwi. The, the big thing to remember is, is that size really doesn't matter. And I know Wade mentioned ESDA, and hopefully we'll get a chance a little later on to talk a bit more about that, is this time around, there's a very large realization by the oil and gas industry that there are players in the immediate local area that can do as good a job, as good a quality, and a reasonable a price as anybody else, and sometimes better in all three. So they have a very big awareness, and through the efforts with ESDA, I think we're, we're putting those smaller businesses like myself in contact with the players that need to be in contact, and you're seeing success. So the real thing and the message you want to take out of here is is that if you have a business, even if you have a business idea, it's understanding, as Wade said, is where, where your position is in the, in the real world. It, you know, I'm going to see very few checks with Exxon's logo on it because of the product I am. I'm going to see checks with Kiewit's logo. Hopefully I'm going to see checks with a Pentagon or a DF Burns or some company in Texas that came up here to do a small piece. That's who my customer is. I'm not going to be selling directly to Exxon. So it's understanding who my customer is and understanding how I go about it. When you talk about new business, and I was told I'm not to ramble, but I get up and I tend to like to talk. Uh, we recently uh, took over the operation of the Clarenville Medical Arts Clinic. And a lot of people say, well, what does that have to do with oil and gas? Well, it has a lot to do with oil and gas. They have to have every person going out on that site has to have a medical. Every person on that site has to have physician coverage, has to have certain blood work. So there's huge opportunities in that industry uh, for, for my new business. So just because you're, you might sell wool or cotton gloves, or as I always say, someone's going to make a fortune selling toilet paper out there. There's opportunities for every industry, and there's opportunities for every business. Uh, what you want to keep in mind is that September of, Bob, correct me, not wrong, 2017? Where's Bob? 2017, that boat or that rig is leaving. And I guarantee you, there's two things that I can guarantee you right now today. That boat is leaving in September of 2017, and it's going to be done on budget. So we have a very finite amount of time to go in there. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to be able to raise and pillage. But if you have an idea that's strong, and that you can add value to what they're doing, then they want to talk to you. So hopefully out of here today, we'll talk more about it, is that from my world and my businesses, that I'm looking at what opportunities and how can I add value to them at a reasonable price. Because I know if you try and go, which is way he said, all we can ask for is be given an opportunity. We still have to be competitive with the rest of the world. Surprisingly enough, it's not that hard. So, let's get started. Uh, again, we'll throw the floor open to you people as well. But hopefully these questions will just uh, get the topic started. And they may have touched on some of them already in their brief presentations. But the first question is, I, I, I give each of you an opportunity to say a few words on each one if you want. Just four questions. Uh, what opportunities? For businesses, do, do you see with the Hebron project? Anything specific or a key mention of you and Fuzet on his, but what, what opportunities do you see personally for the Hebron project? Ladies first. 
Um, I think I've already alluded to some of them in terms of, uh, you know, my background in terms of the jewelry and being able to produce gifts and gift items, individualized items, high quality, um, you know, that can be that can be used in that pur for that purpose. Uh, for me, uh, again, being in the clothing decorating business and also being a supplier of safety supply, um, we're hoping to be able to fill the niche of um, the safety awards or the uh, office staff or one particular company that just wants a uh, clothing item, a jacket or, or whatever, or even to create souvenirs for tours that are going through that, that particular area from time to time. So. For us, again, the decorative clothing is one, but also the uh, the safety the safety apparel. Uh, and, you know, that's a new line for us, and uh, we're hoping that that's going to really take off. And again, not to fill the major orders, but to uh, to fill in the pieces of the ones that were hard to fit or supplies that they can't reach fast enough to su to support the group that's that's on site at the time. So, for that. I'm old and ugly, so I won't stand up, so you don't have to look at me. Mm -hmm. Here again, the opportunities are whatever you want to make it. Uh, the realization from our business is you can't be everything to everybody. So we know what we do and what we do well, so we're focusing on that. In past projects, we've sometimes fell into trap of trying to get into things that we, we weren't into. For example, uh, in my printing company, a lot of what they wanted was sometimes uh, in signage. So vinyl lettering, uh, Curry signs, GB signs were companies in the area that did that. We started to, to broker a little bit of that and realized very quickly that's not what we do. We don't understand that business. We don't understand the pricing of it. We don't understand the merchandising of it. And although we did a little bit of it, all we were really doing was taking business potentially away from other local businesses, which made no sense to anybody. Uh, so this time around, we're really focused on, on what we do best and, and going to focus on doing that. I'm going to throw it out to the audience too. I'm going to just ask one more question. Uh, what resources are out there for, for you people as business owners to help you build relationships and develop your business uh, with, for, for you, Brown? Can you think about resources are out there? I'm uh, glad you brought that up, actually, because I mentioned Betsy and I mentioned Enlo, but there's so many other different organizations here that have been tremendous help too. Um, you know, human resources, uh, innovation trade, world development, they have been tremendous, tremendous resources for me as well. Um, and I, that's, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. So the different fellow business owners and the different government agencies that are here as well are really uh, incredible resources. Again, not much to add to that. Um, you know, the, the CIBC or CBDC, I'm sorry, um, the ESDA, all of these, uh, all of these um, organizations uh, are re remain focused on the whole project and they kind of guide you towards it, the areas that you need to be or they'll assist you in retraining or uh, whatever it takes to put your business online. So there's a tremendous amount of resources that you need to tap into or that you can tap into. Um, and again, uh, the what I like about the whole thing is that the people that you're talking to are real people. Like, you know, they're not, you're not a number, you go in, you sit down, you, again, I like to talk. And they, and they listen, they endure that. And you know, I talk almost as much as him, but not quite. But, you know, they, they endure that and, and they always have a, a positive outlook and I think that's what carries us through, or carries me through anyway. You know, I can only speak for myself. But, uh, you know, the, the sky's the limit as far as uh, resources are available for right now, as far as I'm concerned. I could talk for an hour on this subject, but I won't. Uh, I will say that I've been fortunate enough to be in business in this town for over 20 years. I've never seen such a large amount of resources out there at our disposal than I have in the past couple of years, from funding to moral support to educational support. Uh, it really is a great time to be in small business in this province, and more importantly, in this region. The one thing I do want to just expand on, because we've talked about Innovation Co, and uh, you guys hopefully are familiar with that, is the ESDA, and it's been mentioned a couple of times. And Greg, if I can, can I just take like two minutes and just 
touch on it? Because I think it is very important to the, to the topic. The Eastern Suppliers Development Alliance was started uh, about two years ago through funding from Innovation Trade and ACOA through the Chamber of Commerce and Zone Boards. And the whole point of that is, is to be the liaison between businesses in this area and the oil and gas industry. We have Bob Candy who's uh, there in the back who's our, a person working for us and he has a wealth of knowledge in the oil and gas industry. So what he does is work with your business to prepare you and talk to you about what opportunities you may or may not have in the industry and what you need to do to pursue those options. Uh, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, organization that's been started here. It's nothing like it of its kind that I know of anywhere else. It's never been done before to this extent, to this degree. If you have, if you own a business now or you're thinking about starting a business, Bob Candy is the guy to talk to. You can get through the Chamber Zone Boards and get you in touch with him or through the funding partners, but he can give you really the, the true hard facts of what, what's possible for your business and what you need to do to be successful. So the Eastern Supply Develop is something out there today that's uh, never been there before, and I tell you, I can't uh, sing its praises enough. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? You want to ask these esteemed business leaders? <coughs> Mr. Tilly has a question. I don't. I don't think I need that, right? Um, as you can tell, we got a lot of students. These are your future employees and possibly your future competition business people. Uh, what advice can you give the students right now who are in and who are looking at that graduation date coming up? What advice can you give them? as they march out into the world in terms of this opportunity and availing of this opportunity? Uh, I, I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a teacher. Actually, I look around the room and I see a lot of familiar faces here because a lot of people in here I did teach. Um, I, I would say be a sponge. And I don't mean that in a negative way of sponging off people. I mean that in a way of like absorbing what you can from people. You know, because we can learn from each other. And I always say that some of the people I've learned the most from in my career as a teacher has been my students, you know, because you learn from them and you pick up and you pull in. And I think that's one of the things I miss most about teaching is I used to sponge off the energy of the teenagers that I dealt with. You know, I love their energy. I love their enthusiasm. I love their, you know, fresh way of it. And something you mentioned there a minute ago too was the thinking outside the box. You know, look at what opportunities you have there and see what kind of where you could fit in and what you love to do. I loved my teaching. I loved my students. Um, so I fed into that. I love my jewelry, and it's something I, 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 know I, I know I'm good at what I do right now, so I feed into that. So pick up on the skills and the traits that you have the most, that you're enthusiastic about and that you feel most comfortable about and that, you're, that you know you can do and you can do well. That's what you mentioned as well. Something that you can do well, yes, and pick up on that and use the resources and be willing to learn from other people. You know, and I don't think we're ever too late to learn. You know, I've learned, and listen, I will say this one thing. I'm, since I've been working on the cancer bracelets and I've talked to so many people, I have learned how much I have to be grateful for. And for every person I speak to and every story I hear, that sh opens my world a little bit more. So being willing to learn from other people and, uh, and, and Dig into what you know you do best and go for that. You know, I remember somebody said it when, once, I can't remember the exact quote now, and I'm sure somebody here can probably quote it properly for me, but if you pick something you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. You know? And I love my business. I love what I do. You know? So I pull into that. And people will sense that. And another thing I would say is take pride in what you do. You know, if something happens with one of my braces, if something goes wrong, I'll deal with it. You know, we have orders come in. They orders go up the same day. Kathleen and I were talking about this today. You know, so we do, we take pride in what we do. We do our job and we try to do it to the best of our abilities. And I think that's a part of the, 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 the positive thing, small business. Because you're investing. So invest in yourself. Steve used to have that on his t shirt over in the gym. Invest in you. Okay, I'm going to shut I'm not, I'm not going to use the mic either. That's going to be really hard to follow. What she said you know, pretty much sums it up. Um, I worked uh, 25, 30 years in the car business and I enjoy, enjoyed um, the majority of it, and I'll say 99.9%. But it, it was something that I wanted to do at the time. 
but now I have an opportunity to do something that I want to do right now. And I think, again, she alluded to it, if you're good at something, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, uh, ask questions to people who are doing similar things, um, learn from their mistakes, tap into the resources that are available to you right now, because again, it's there in abundance. Never look back, it, 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 do what you want to do. Don't, uh, don't, you know, take the path you want to be on. Don't, uh, don't, don't deter from that because you don't think you're big enough or good enough or, or that it's not a good idea. It's your idea. Be, in the, be an individual, do what you want to do. It work, it'll work. If you put enough time, it'll work. Oh, uh, I agree with what they said, but. <laughs> you, you do have, and this is really to the young people, because us old folks, we're beyond, we're beyond all this now. You really have to ask what you want to get out of life. Do you want to be wealthy? Do you want to be happy? We all want to be both. But the reality is sometimes your business idea, as much as you love it, as much as you're good at it, may not bring you the, the, the revenue or wealth that you may hope. So it's understanding your opportunities in life and understanding what you want to get out of it. Uh, if you're fortunate enough, enough, and I was at a, a, a meeting this morning and Wayne Gretzky spoke, and the question was asked to Wayne, he said, for the young people, can you say how many hours you practiced when you were a kid? And he said, I couldn't tell you because not one hour felt like a practice, like he was practicing because he loved it so much. Now there's a guy that, he said at age 13, he never thought he'd ever make the NHL. He just, if something done, he thought he'd do it and go on to something else. Well, we all have passions in life. But the reality is that not all of us are going to be financially successful in that. If you're okay with that, and there's nothing wrong with be doing something that you love and not being financially successful, I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to be real, uh, then that's great. But if you want to be successful, then look at your idea, look at the real business model around that idea, and see if that matches up with the level of success you want to achieve in life. If it does, every you say, do it, do it with a passion. But whatever you do in life, be 100% committed towards it. And I think if you are 100% committed, then you'll, you will achieve a certain level of success, and hopefully you'll achieve a certain level of personal satisfaction, too. Any other questions? Right here? Yeah? A question, uh, or comment, or how you twist this, but not just Hebron, but in the region must be in the service hub in general. And the spin-offs, because not everybody's going to, who has a business, is going to be going looking for a contract from Hebron. So they have a retail store. So to me, it's going to be more of a spin-off that people have the funds to spend. So how do we create the environment in Clarenville that Clarenville is a viable option and that people should look to their local businesses before they take their money and they go outside? Everyone heard the question? You can yeah, yeah, basically she said that a lot of businesses won't be dealing directly with Hebron and they're going to get spin-off. There'll be a lot of spin-off jobs that she owns a retail business. And there'll be a lot of spin-off work. And her question is how do you make her question is how do you make Clarenville an attractive place for people to come and, and, and spend their money in Clarenville so we get a spin-off business, in, including local people and make sure they stay in and spend their money here in, in the local community. The environment. Great new barn. I'll start this time. It's a tough one. You know, uh, and, and I don't know if it's just Newfoundlanders or if it's human nature that people tend to look down upon your locals. So if you have a business in Bonavista, Vista, people go to Clarenville to shop. If you're on Clarenville, people go to St. John's to shop. And it doesn't mean the product is any different or any more expensive. It's just the, men the attitude of it. it. It's a tough one. I think what we do is is we look to our chambers, we look to our, 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 our civic leaders, and we get them, and as a community, we start driving that point home. If you're a small business, you know, you'll rarely see me spend a dollar outside this town that I can't spend inside this region. However, I can go to, to the Avalon Mall on any given Saturday and sit down, and I'll see a dozen people I know from this area shopping. That don't mean they're wrong, but that's the realities of it. So I think here again is understanding who your customer is, and understanding how to market to them in an effective manner. But as a group of businesses, how can we foster a mentality? Not individually, but something as a group. Like is something like a group effort, something that we should could we be doing. Through the local chambers. Push your chamber to come up with ideas because they have a great ability. We've done it before through Chamber of the Shop Locally campaigns, especially around Christmas time. 
to start getting that mindset and understanding the benefits. Clarenville is very unique because we have a, a lot of people coming to this region because of the stadium, because of the ski hill and the golf courses. We have a lot of people coming to here. It's a matter of, of educating the public that we're a small community, but we're able to service and be competitive because we have to be. It's a global economy. My price for liquid paper has to be the same price in downtown Toronto. That's just the reality of it. So it's understanding getting that message out. I think the chambers are a great avenue for that. One of the tools that the ESTA has developed is a database, which includes all of the businesses in the region and gives a profile and product mix, and, and it can draw a great deal of detail on the businesses. And a lot of these companies that are coming in and working with the ExxonMobil, the Cuba Cabernet, and the Morley Parsons may not have knowledge of the local area, but that database is a tool that they're using to become familiar with what this region does have to offer. So uh, I think that's another thing we can use, and a, a very useful tool that Keywood and more departments have been using. So if you haven't registered, I encourage you to make sure you do that. If I can just build on Nancy's comment. In previous projects, and you're right, not everybody's going to get, get see, see something from it, but the number of pizzas that were bought in this town and sent out to, the, to that site is absolutely insane if you ever did the totaling on it. So just because you are a small person, and just because you say, hey, I'm not going to get it, it's getting the awareness out there that they're consumers. They, it's a small town, that won't, not even a small town, 3,000 people are going to be out there. They're consumers. When they're off shift, they're going to be coming to this region to shop. So it's, it's looking at ideas like the ESDA database. It's like pushing the chamber to come up with creative ideas to get our information out there where our businesses are. Not just Clarewell businesses but business in the entire region. And I think there's a great opportunity here for tourist operators. You've got 3,000 people that are potentially, potentially not from this area that are going to be having days off and 12 hours off and are going to be looking for things to do. So it's how do we get them in touch with, you know, if we have money, we need to get in touch with vendors. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, all our speakers talked about how how important is to build networks, relationships. And Andrew said, learn from each other, or listen to people, and learn from their mistakes, etc. And the comment was made, you should join the ESDA. Uh, I think I would encourage that. I also encourage you to become a member of the chamber. You know, you become a involved in a group of, of fellow businesses. We have luncheons all the time, and you, and you can meet fellow businesses and learn from it. We have speakers all the time. So the more people you can talk to, the more relationships you can establish, usually the better off you are. Any other questions? Uh, I've got a I'd like to know what uh, what the biggest challenge is that you're facing today, because it, it, it may not necessarily be related to Hebron, or may very well be. But as business owners, you know, there's a bunch of challenges and opportunities that you face. What are, what's the number one challenge that each of you are facing today? Question: What's the number one challenge that you're facing as business leaders? <laughs> Okay. It's uh, for, for if you had asked me that five years ago, I would have said I would have said capitalization, because I think uh, getting funding and be able to, to fund your ideas uh, as little as five years ago was in some cases almost impossible. I think because of the economic uh, events of the past number of years. I think because of the in introduction of new programs through federal and provincial government, finding the resources and finding funding out there has never been easier. Uh, today and in the next couple of years, without a doubt, it's going to be labor. And affordable labor is going to be the problem. A lot of us, well, we're all small businesses. A lot of us are in retail. And as I said before, the price of my liquid paper has to be the same as in Toronto. Well, my labor rates aren't going to be the same in Toronto in the coming years. And we're, we're seeing it already that labor rates are going to go up uh, and the availability of labor is going to go up. Unfortunately, I can't raise my prices in a lot of cases to offset that. So that means my bottom line is going to take a bit of a hit. Uh, so I've got two problems. I got number one, I'm going to start, I'm going to be doing more business, making less margin and having less staff uh, to do the work. So that means I got to start working, which I really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where that would be against your principles, yeah. <laughs> and I've known Keith for a lot of years, so I'm allowed to say that. 
Um, he's absolutely right. Um, I just came out of a business that human resources labor was the hardest thing to find. And competent, um, focused, loyal employee. Um, you know, if you got them, keep them. Um, you know, he's exactly right. Your bottom line will shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, and you just got to be geared to uh, to survive that. But I can't think of, a, of anything even close to when it comes to an obstacle as as human relations or human resources right now. Labor is going to be you know really really tough to find. Again, a, a, a caution to the people who have employees, hang out to them, make them, make them happy, whatever it takes, because they're so hard to find and they're so hard to bring up to the speed that they are at this point, right? I guess I'm uh, probably one of, I'm lucky. I have some wonderful people and I've networked with a, a wonderful group. Uh, most of my work is done with peace work, so, uh, you know, most of the bracelets that we make, it, and that are done by um, other people straining the bracelets. That's how we did the, uh, not last summer, summer before, we did almost 20,000 bracelets between Clarenville and Placentia strung and put together. Um, you know, and that was done through, a, yeah, I see some people nodding here, uh, through the network of wonderful people. Um, mine is simply just trying to keep on top of things. It's just so much on the go. and. You know, as a, a single mom, as a business owner, as trying to keep, uh, you know, keep everything under control, I think that probably that would be my biggest challenge right now. Uh, just trying to, uh, I love jewelry, I love working with the jewelry, but I find that I don't have as much time to do that because there's so many other things that have to be taken care of. So I don't know if that makes sense to anyone here, but it's, it, I find it a real challenge trying to make sure that everything is done uh, and, and taken care of. And, and probably what I need, I'm at a point now where I need to invest in more labor to, so I can manage things better. So just learning those types of things is my biggest challenge right now. But it, it's good. It's good. I'm learning. I will, I will make one point, and, and, I, and I want to be this. I wanted my comment to be a positive. Um, within my business, we have two employees that um, we're very proud of, and and I think that that's something that as an employer that we have to take a look at. So I wouldn't want anyone to go away thinking today, well, he's got a business, but he's not happy with the people he has. I think that if you have people working for you right now, in most cases you are happy with the people that you have right now. You're just hoping that you're going to be able to find more like them so that you can you can grow as you need to. So yeah, again, uh, not a negative on my part at all. We have two fantastic employees and they work well together and it's more of a family than it is a workplace. Uh, they, you know, they, they do their thing and uh, the conversations uh, that, that are in our workplace are not are not conversations that I've normally heard in my own, and they're more family oriented than numbers oriented. So, and again, that's a relationship that I built with my employees and our employees. You know, make them feel comfortable, make them feel like they're wanted. But again, uh, and and try to find more like them so that you can you can move forward. So again, all positive on my side. Thank you. Okay, the, the question and answer session, this is supposed to end at 1 o'clock actually, and then it'll be half an hour for everyone to mill around and talk to each other and network, as they all said. So it's now uh, 16 minutes after 1. Perhaps I'll just take one more question and, and, uh, and then we'll break, break for everyone to have a chance to talk to each other. Anybody else have anything you want to ask? If not, uh, well, thank you very much to, to our business people for coming out. We have a Again, I also want to thank uh, all the partners who got together and put the luncheon together. Was, I think it was a great event. Uh, they were the Carnberry Chamber of Commerce, Discovery Regional Development Board, uh, NLO, CBDC, BDC, ACOA, Department of Integration, Trade and Rural Development, and Scotiabank. And we have a gift as well for all our panel, panel members. Tammy or Chad has a view. Well, that's what it is. This is our <laughs> this is our very prestigious chamber ornament. People die for these. <laughs> and this is this year's uh, ornament. I hope you <coughs> hope you enjoy it. During all the stores now, so go and get one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.
Thank you. I have one more comment on this now. <laughs> Thank you, Brian Dalton. I, I do want to say one thing I, I forgot to mention earlier. One of the best things you can do is volunteer. If you want, we talked about networking earlier, and the more organizations you're involved in, the more people you get to know, and but more importantly, they get to know you. And they get to see you as, as the person you are, not just a business trying to sell them something. And I've been involved, and a lot of people know I volunteer quite a bit in this town. Uh, I've been involved in this ornament project for a number of years, and it's a great, great project. Uh, but one of the things I've had the opportunity to do is meet a ton of people, not just in this area, but around the province. And I'm sure some of, if you want to call it success, has come from knowing those people, making those connections. So if you want to really get out, there's always things you can involve in that interest you. So I just wanted to make that little plug. Thank you. And finally, there's going to be a donation made on behalf of the group that organized the luncheon to the Sife, uh, College Sife group. Should I ask Paul to come up? Uh, Sharon? Sharon? Sharon. Yeah. One of the students come up? President Sherry. What? President Sherry Smith. You're the president of Sherry? Yes, I am. Want to speak? <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a donation on behalf of the committee to set up the whole luncheon. Can you look at me both? Greg, can you move that way so you don't crown? say thank you on behalf of the Slave Committee at the College of the North Atlantic and to say that yes we will be some of us will be looking for jobs in the near future so keep us in mind <laughs> and uh, just we love giving back to the community um, we've got several projects on the go this year that are all community oriented and we love doing what we do um, this year our aim is to our big goal is to raise 8,500 pounds of food for the food bank. Uh, we're working with uh, REACH on several fronts um, in terms of the housing and affordability that area. And uh, we're also doing financial education pieces with different areas in the community. So, uh, and like I said, we love what we do, so thank you very much for this little donation. Okay, Shannon says that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone can just uh, build about, talk to each other. It's, only, it's uh, 20 after 1. If you want to stay around for a few more minutes and have a chat, it's great. Thanks for coming. <laughs> have a great day.